All right, so we are going to watch that brand new Safe Haven cinematic. Now, my dad was in the home office for a while, so I didn't want to wait on watching it. I had to see it. So this is not a reaction. This is going to be a discussion. We're going to watch it. We're going to discuss certain things. There's going to be some stop and go. And then at the end, we'll kind of have it playing muted, and I'll be talking about it some more. So if you're expecting a reaction, you know, skedaddle, because this is not what that is. I'll be discussing it as the thrall and styrofoam lover that I am, because I got spoiled for me that those guys are going to be in it. So yeah, I mean, I already watched it, but before that I already had spoiled that those guys were going to be in it. So yeah, let's watch it and let's talk about it. Look at the freaking detail, dude. On his hands, on the fucking wheat grass or whatever that is. And at first, when I didn't know where they were. But that very quickly becomes obvious when you see floating rocks. There he is, dude. Look at like how frantically it's like, oh shit, that's fucking Sourfang. Like he didn't believe it at first. Even Thrall gets excited at Sourfang. So, this is home now. Home. And the family. <laughs> like the mop trailer. Not far. You can tell he's confused, right? Like, he's got no idea, presumably, what's going on back on Azeroth. And to have Sarfang just appear here. He's not here to talk about home and family. Something's wrong. You can see in his face. He's suspicious, because something really, clearly ain't right. So. This world. Well, it looks good. Broken. Fallen apart. Just like the Horde. You know? Do you know what she's done while you've been hiding? And see, I kind of expected Saurfang to have a bit more of a... I don't know if humbleness, or... I didn't really know how I expect him to react, but I didn't quite expect him to just immediately dig at him like, Yeah, you've been hiding, like immediate fucking guilt trip. Like, as a former leader of the Horde, but you can see that even Sourfang does not give a gosh diddly darn who he's talking to. Even if it's the former leader of the Horde, the one who founded the Horde we know today, he's gonna shame him for hiding. And who, who wouldn't? I mean, not, I mean, not many people, but Sourfang can get away with it. But, yeah, clearly, it's gonna take a lot to get Thrall back. And Sourfang knows that. So he's got to immediately go digging at that. I left that life behind. I'm no one's savior. That shame from killing Garrosh. I will not lead the horde. I didn't ask. <laughs> I love that because Sourfang might not want him to lead the horde because he ran away from it. Either that or he just knew he wasn't going to do it. So he wasn't planning on asking him to do it. So clearly that wasn't going to be an argument. <laughs> I just love that. I didn't ask. You know, kind of like that snarky old man like, I don't really give a damn what you thought I was going to say. That ain't what I'm saying. But I hoped you would at least fight for it. And I like how we kind of have that moment of suspense. Is he going to go back to like grab a weapon? Is he just going to walk away sadly? And then it's going to be like a big like argument, you know, standoff between these two. But then we get this. Suspenseful music. The fucking Deadpool-esque assassin. Ah, 
How fucking badass was that? The rogue was invisible. Safa knew exactly where to grab it and where to fucking twist. Let's let's re instant replay of that. Raw clearly haven't grown soft. Crack. Without even blinking an eye. That was so fucking cool, dude. And not that you had to pull down the mask, but that was clearly a forsaken. You were followed. I followed them. Very interesting line. He followed them. Does that mean that Sylvanas thought Thrall would be coming back? So she sent assassins to Nagrand after him? Like, wh like, what kind of implications does that open up if they were already on their way? Assuming Sourfang's telling the truth. Which he probably is, because he's a super, super cool badass. What does that imply? If he was following assassins who ultimately were trying to get the Thrall. Either that, or he thought he was following them, and they really were after Sourfang, because, you know, Sourfang's a fugitive now, and a lot of people want him dead. Either way, the plot thickens. Goddamn right. Because Thrall knows it too, right? Like, everything Thrall's gone through, and that's part of the reason why you can kind of understand why he wants to be away. Everything he went through to form this whore, everything he went through and it falling apart and coming back together and going through various leaders. But guess what? sarfang has been through that times two and a half easily, just with his lifespan. Like, it's kind of like... It really is like a mentor, you know to the student kind of thing. Like, yeah, times get tough, but no matter what, you have an obligation. You don't get to hide. I never got to hide, and nor would I have hid if I had gotten the chance to. We don't get to hide. Get your ass back and help us take back our horde. Like, and you can see that in his in Thrall's eyes too. Like, he knows. Like, he gets it. You bought the horde through blood. As the music lifts, you know Sarfang's gotten through to him. See, for a second, I thought that was the Doomhammer, but the Pommel wasn't quite right. And then I remembered Doomhammer went to Shamans, so... yeah. If you, make, if you can make Sourfang smile, you've done something right. Kinda reminded me of Duratan too with that last part, but how fucking cool was that shit, dude? Like... I unfortunately had this leaked to me a few days ago. I was watching tips and on his stream and he accidentally leaked a few stills of uh, of the cinematic when he was at Blizzard, but whatever, shit happens. So I knew that these guys were going to be in a cinematic together. Whatever. Didn't know what it was going to be. I had no idea. What, I was judging by the surroundings. I assumed it was going to be like uh, Duratar, like they're always going to come back after he'd heard something. But clearly that's not the case. Sourfang went to Nagrand to go find Thrall. Uh, again, it, assuming it's, yeah, it, it's gotta be in the grand, because he said this world is broken, and, you know, yeah, so he's on the grand, he's been there for a while, and to our knowledge, he's got no idea, zero clue, about what's been going on back home. Like, you'd, you'd like to think if he did know, he would have come back, but judging by the initial reaction, maybe not. So, the fact that Saurfang you know, one of his first things that he had to do, because, like, I, I played through the quest, and I chose to help Zakan help Sourfang and not tell Nathanos a damn thing about anything. So, and my, when you saw him, he's like, I've got things to do, and you can't follow me. I, I knew he was going to do something, but I did not know he was going to go find Thrall. And this part where the fucking assassins come about, like, dude... Again, like, what are we... What's the idea here? Like, did Sylvanas send assassins here to go kill Thrall? Because, think about this. Thrall is the former leader of the Horde. He founded this Horde. And therefore, while a lot of people might not agree with him, he is still a symbol of hope for a lot of people. And he's definitely the kind of guy who you would want to bring back to help lead a revolution or bring the Horde back together. 
Yeah, he, you know, he did that kind of... He, not that he really ran away during Mop, but... He was away during Cataclysm, and that, you know, let Garrosh rise to power, and then he came back and helped kick him out of the mantle of Warchief. Warchief? Warchief? Warchief. Warchief. So why wouldn't he do that? According to Sylvanas, you know, in her mind, why wouldn't he do that again? So in her twisted perspective, of course you're going to send assassins after him. And that nice little twist of Saurfang having... Because think about it. I already mentioned this, but Saurfang's a fugitive, and he's already had Dark Rangers sent after him. So your first thought is, well, of course they're after Saurfang. So either thing is... It doesn't really matter which is true, because they're both plausible and they're both believable, and still got us the same result. Because Thrall is coming back, boys. Like, who else is excited that motherfucking Thrall is coming back? Seriously. Like, I I don't really like what they did to Thrall with his writing and Cataclysm and made, made, making him super Jesus and the fact that he kind of just became irrelevant for a while, probably because people were tired of him, but I always loved Thrall. I didn't think the writing always did him justice, but I always loved him. I play Warcraft 3, dude. I read Lord of the Clans several times. I love, you know, I loved Thrall's Horde. When I think the Horde, I think the Horde that Thrall formed in the desert of Duratar, you know, building Orgrimmar, and just all the things that led us, you know, up to this point. I That's my Horde. Sylvanas is not... I'm, I'm not going to say not my Warchief. Sylvanas is not leading my Horde, even though I do main the Horde. And seeing Thrall come back, he's not going to lead it. He's made it clear he doesn't want to lead it. Saurfang doesn't give a damn about that. He just wants the guy who made this horde to come back and fight for it. And god damn it, that's what he's gonna... That's that's what he's gonna do. And I couldn't be more excited over it. And that model is crisp. Seeing him in this quality of cinematic is beautiful. Oh, so good. So, so good. Alright, I'm done rambling and, like, nerdgasming over this. Sorry if this was ram... ram sorry if that's not what you wanted, I, but I said in the beginning, this is not a reaction. We're gonna be doing some stop and go and some rambling, so... Hope you're prepared for that. But that's all I got today. Tell me what you think about the current situation of the horror and thrall and all that. Just, I, I, I want to talk about this, all right? Leave some comments and, and we'll talk. And until you see me again, live well and ancestors watch over you.